Hello everyone, and welcome to a uh, Civ 4 Caveman to Cosmos tutorial. I will be going over a few things in this tutorial, uh, the first of which will be the custom game options, the second will be the end game options, and then afterwards I will be going through all of, well not all of the game, uh, I'll be going through how to start up the game and to what to consider doing beelining towards and stuff like that, like trying to help people know what to do with the game and the best way to go about doing things because if you can get the start of the game uh, done well then that can go pretty well into the mid and late game. Anyway, so the custom game options can be a bit daunting in this uh, mod. Pretty daunting to be honest. I would suggest playing on a standard size map or, or less. Uh, anything higher will usually clog up your uh, computer. In general, I will be playing on Emperor difficulty. Um, the maps, map types that you will normally go for that are advised are the uh, Perfect World 2F and the Perfect Mongoose version 310. Uh, three planets is pretty good if you want to uh, have Mars the moon and planet earth but it tends to be a much smaller map each each map is a much smaller map than the original map uh, because like the standard standard size map actually includes all three planets so it's a third each planet is a third of the size of each normal i like to play on uh, perfect world 2f perfect mongoose works pretty well as well both of which are pretty good uh, with perfect mongoose you can both can decide if you have Pangeas or not. Um, you can start everywhere or the new world. You can have a, a specific amount of resources or a specific amount of uh, rivers. Speed. I would suggest the typical speed to go for is epic or long. Uh, try not to play this game on blitz or normal. The game is made to be played in a longer time. Uh, yeah, like you do want to be playing on longer speeds. Uh, most, there, what is it? Joseph thinks Epic is the best speed, and some other people think Eternity is the best speed. I, for let's plays and stuff, Epic has been pretty good to me. Although everything else, I would always start in prehistoric era. Uh, there's actually. It doesn't work very well if you start if you start in any other era, and you can decide if you want what climate you want and what sea level you want. The same with the amount of uh, AI. I would suggest not playing with any more than six AI. Usually, it clogs up the machine a bit too much. So, the options that are specific to C to C are the options I will be going through. The majority of these options start are all the same options for um, are all the same options for Civ IV. Uh, they start actually at Barbarian World is when you get the C to C, Caveman to Cosmos, Revolutions, uh, Rise of Mankind, and all those other different mods. This is when these options start. Barbarian World is the barbarians. The barbarians start with a city for every single uh, AI or player within the game. So there is seven players here, so there would be seven barbarian cities to start at the very at the very, very start. Uh, it's not needed, it can actually give the AI quite a boost sometimes, so it's not great. Um, So revolutions mod, revolutions mod has it so that uh, cities will flip out of a specific civ, not to another civilization. Well, not to another civilization within the game, but to a brand new civilization. It's when it's like liberating cities, but creating a brand new country. So. I don't know, think of if the UK liberated Scotland or if um, 
well, Ukraine. Uh, yeah, when Ukraine was liberated from the USSR or all this uh, Afghanistan and stuff. So that's what that means. It's it's um it's advised to turn it off because the AI do not do very well with this mod. The warning there doesn't work very well because it is actually not true. The AI are pretty bad with the Revolutions mod. Lemon Religions only allows uh, one holy city per... Um, what, per sev? That's, that's fine. Uh, I don't like it. I like to... Sometimes I like to have as many um, religions as possible. No Inquisitions, just disables Inquisitions. Uh, inquisitions are... Um, you can... You can buy an inquisitor. You can build an inquisitor to get rid of all of the religions within the city of your choice, except for your own religion. Barbarian civs. Uh, so this is when a barbarian city becomes strong enough to become a civilization. It will become a brand new civilization of its own. The same, the same concept as a revolution mod. Having this turned on, as I said, will create more civilizations more AI and it can actually clog up your machine a bit more again so I prefer, I would, just, I would um, advise going against it unless you've really got a powerful machine that is insanely overclocked. This game runs on one core um, so yeah uh, you have to have a massive gigahertz in order to run this game at a much higher setting or with more sieves should I say. Tech diffusion is when the technologies that are lower down start getting easier and easier to tech up uh, so the further behind an AI or yourself gets the easier it is to research a technology. The more the more people that have a technology the quicker it is to research that tech. Starting as minor sieves you Starting as minor sieves is actually a really, really nice concept. Everybody starts at war, permanent war, and cannot talk to each other until they discover writing. The problem is the AI are pretty bad in this scenario. The AI build towards war and they always build to try and beat whoever's around them. Meaning they'll constantly try to fight each other for uh, units and they'll focus more on units rather than buildings at the start of the game until they uh, get to writing. Some AI don't even get to writing until really late in the game. Uh, say like 700 turns in. By the way, there's like 6,000 turns. But yeah, they, they take a long, long time sometimes and it is pretty bad. Uh, so try to avoid putting that on. Unless you want to just have fun. It is really fun. I, I, I would like it to get fixed, but I don't think it will get fixed anytime soon. Usable mountains is what it says. You can use mountains. Uh, Surround and destroy. The more units you have around a tile, or a unit, or a city, the easier it is to destroy that city, tile, whatever. Advanced diplomacy just adds new uh, dipl diplomatic trading options, embassies, Trade, trade military, worker units, etc. Unlimited wonders removes the restrictions of number of wonders that can be built in one city. So in this game, uh, in this mod, should I say, you can only build a certain amount of wonders depending on your culture level of your city. The higher the culture level, the more wonders you can build. Barbarian generals just allow um, barbarians to get barbarian generals through combat. No zones of control. Um, this is a weird thing to say. So, if you go into a fort, it, it's only it's only of control that only affects forts. So, if you go into a fort from the north, south, or wherever, you can move to any tile adjacent, uh, or you can run away but you can't move more than that. So you can either move one adjacent or you can run backwards. Uh, it's, eh, whatever. 
Final five is for every set amount of turns, the lowest scoring civilization is removed from the game. High to low, whenever you become the highest scoring civilization in the game, you become the lowest civilization in the game. Increase in difficulty uh, after every set amount of time. Uh, the difficulty increases by one up until it reaches deity. Uh, I guess this is fine. And it starts off at the difficulty that you set it at. I guess this is fine if you think you're a deity player, but you can't deal with the star that deity have. Yeah, I, I, I get that, but I normally just start on deity. I might go to mortal and have an increase in difficulty to deity, but then deity isn't as strong. Like, one of the biggest things about deity is that they start with two cities. Uh, as soon as they go into immortal, they no longer start with two cities. So, yeah. Um, where are we? Great commanders just allow uh, great generals to become great commanders and lead troops. Uh, they have command point limits, so normally five, so they can lead five troops. And they themselves get uh, experience, which then buffs the the promotions that the great commander gets buffs the units that they are commanding, uh, which is actually really nice. I, I really enjoy great commanders. Cultural like starts. You can play with this on or off, but there's no uh, nothing wrong with it. What this does is it puts civilizations close. It puts civilizations relative to the map on the real world. So the UK or uh, Elizabeth will start next to someone like Louis the Thirteenth. Um, so Elizabeth, who is English, will start next to France. Or France will start next to Germany or Spain or something like that. I prefer not to have this on, but I can see why some people would. It's really up to you what you want to do. Personalised map, don't turn it on. Just don't turn it on. It clogs up the map with um, lettering for certain places. Advanced economy uh, just has more economic factors to the game. Increases the depth of trade and inflation in the game. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Realistic Culture Spread is a really, really interesting game mechanic. Uh, mechanic. So, as your culture spreads, instead of going out in a big in the fat X and increasing over and like that every single turn, it increases um, gradually. And it goes over certain land faster and certain land slower. So, like, it goes over flats, uh, plains, and stuff like that faster than it go would go through forests, that it would go through rivers, that, that it would go through um, mountains, the sea. And it makes more sense to me. I prefer, I do like realistic culture spread more than the big fat cross. I, I understand why people would play it with a big fat cross because it's always been the case for Civ 4. But I enjoy this one, the realistic cult was read. Larger cities without metropolitan administrations allows your cities to work up to three tiles away before they get to metropolitan administration uh, tech or the, the building. Uh, all they need to go do is get to the influential uh, culture. Both are uh, influential is a lot, lot faster to get to than the Metropolitan Administration. So it depends on what you want to do there that, with that. Realistic corporations, corporations will uh, grow by themselves uh, and a lot faster than they do normally. Religious decree, as religion becomes less popular, it will start decaying from your planet, uh, from your cities. Barbarians always raise. So. Having this on or off is really a preference. I think this might actually be... Yeah, so they don't capture cities, they just destroy the cities. I guess this could be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, having the barbarians get stronger or just destroying a, a civilization. One or the other, it's up to you. This, I, I don't... I always have it uh, turned off. United Nations. This allows for the United Nations and the Apostolic Palace to be built. Even if the um, the diplomatic uh, victory is off. Advanced espionage just allows for more espionage um, abilities. Advanced nukes allow for more 
uh, variations of nuclear weapons. Divine Prophets, that, allow, that gives you the ability to have prophets. And so whenever you research a tech that gives you a religion, it will give you a prophet instead of a religion. If you're only looking to build one religion and you're looking to get all the religions in the entire game, that is fine. However, as soon as someone else gets a great prophet and they have that religious tech, they can create that religion. So, this is fine. I play with it sometimes and I play with it and I don't play with it other times. Yeah. No side limits from civics. I have been talking to a fellow um, Caveman Cosmos player. So, the game limits the amount of cities you can build by having limits, uh, by having civics make you have a penalty for having too many cities. Uh, on a large map, it is 15 cities, and every city above that increases your empire, it uh, increases every city's unhappiness by three for every city above that limit. So say you get to 20 cities, you have an you have an unhappiness value of 15 for every single city that you have, up to a certain point. Once you get to the, above that certain, once you get to democracy or whatever it is, uh, it's fine. It stops being a problem. I play with it turned off, but I could see why turning that on is pretty useful. I'm going to play play with it on, so we're going to play with it, no city limits in this game. No fixed borders, fixed borders mechanics, uh, fixed borders, I don't quite remember what these do. I, I just never turn them off, so, have an experience. Yeah, no loss of experience when upgrading troops. I play with this on. Unlimited national units. There are certain units in the game which are classed as national units. These are arsonists, uh, hunters, trackers, um, and then there's actual units that you get for having a specific religion. Uh, not a religion, civic. Civic? No. Culture. Uh, turning this on allows you to build as many as you want, which is pretty harsh because the one of the strongest units in the game is actually the arsonist, and it's, well not in the game, but it's so strong that it's stronger than any other unit for a whole entire era. Uh, if you can build an unlimited, unli unlimited amount, it's limited to 20, if you can build an unlimited amount, then you wouldn't build any other unit for the rest of for like a, he a whole era or maybe even longer to be honest. No negative traits, turns off all negative traits. So all, all, uh, all characters get uh, two positives and one negative trait. Pure traits means that any negative penalties and positive, any negative traits get removed from positive traits. And in, yeah, neg any negative penalties get removed from positive traits and any, pos any positive bonuses get removed from negative traits. Developing leaders is actually really, really nice. Um, a nice concept that I really enjoy playing with it. Developing leaders is the more culture you get empire-wide, the, the more traits you can give to your um, leader. For every third trait, I believe, you have to choose a negative or remove a positive trait. Start without positive traits just means uh, start without traits, pretty much. Um, no nukes, yeah. No nukes is no nukes. Religious disabling, just uh, religious buildings of non-state religions go mostly inactive. Uh, I'm not sure how this works really, so I don't really turn it on. Upscale production time increases all production by 40%. Uh, Caveman to Cosmos Flight or Fight or Flight mod. Uh, this is pursuing and fleeing during battle or withdraw and flee uh, pursuit. It gives you more pursuit and withdraw um, options and promotions and all that other stuff. Size Matters mod. I would uh, highly advise turning this off, especially for early game mechanics. So, 
this is when three units create a bigger unit. It is one and a half times stronger. So your initial club bin is a strength two. Three of them becomes a strength three. Uh, arsonists are a strength eight. Three of them become a strength twelve. So there you can you can see what happens. And you can act, you can also split them into three separate units, and they become sixty six percent weaker. So your say your stone thrower who you start with is a strength one. You can turn it into strength uh, strength point six six. It's really good at the start to explore. Really bad to capture animals. And capturing animals is one of the most important aspects of the game, early game. Minimum city borders are your first, your eight tiles that you start with are the eight tiles you'll always have, no matter what, until your city gets captured or like culture flipped. But even when it's trying to get culture flipped, it will still have those eight tiles. I don't play with this, I think it's dumb. So yeah, more rares and more resources. If you feel like your the amount of rivers and resources are a bit low, then turn these on. I I actually feel like they're a bit high. Assign specialist experience. So specialists are things like um, great scientists, great uh, engineers and stuff, and they will give you experience to certain troop types. Uh, engineers give experience to workers. Uh, spies give experience to espionage units. Um, your great general gives military and so on and so forth. More experience to level. This is, yeah, you just require twice as much experience to level every single time. You can adjust it. We're actually going to not play with that this time around during this. Uh, nightmare mode is if you are finding deity a little bit too easy, go for nightmare mode. It makes it a lot harder. It is like going from, say, Emperor to Deity. So the, the difficulty spike from Emperor to de Deity is quite a lot. And if you could, if you think about that spike, that's the same spike from Deity to Nightmare. Size Matters Uncut is just um, Size Matters, but stronger. Uh, well, we'll introduce... Yeah, uh, teleporting, teleport hunting rewards. So you can play with this on or off. This is another preferential treatment. Uh, all these are preferential choices, to be honest. So if you don't mind micromanagement, like proper micromanagement hell, when you hunt animals, you subdue them, and then you're like they normally get teleported back to your city, and. Uh, when they get teleported back to your city, you can turn them into uh, science, you can turn them into pretty much anything you want. If you, if you turn this off, teleport hunting wards off, they will not teleport back to your city. They will stay with the hunter that captured them. So you'll have to run them all the way back to your cities. It can be irritating as hell. But it's actually a really nice mechanic. It makes sense why they wouldn't teleport back to your city, like hunting gathering. You hunt an animal, you would bring it back. You would hunt an animal, you would bring it back. So we're actually going to play with it off. I prefer it on, but we're going to play with it off just to showcase the annoyance of it. Amnesty for units using Rite of Passage. When you have a Rite of Passage and not just open borders, you can send certain units over. Uh, yeah. Over the borders. Combat mod hide and seek is add a new layer of invisibility. So units get more invisibility in this game. They get ambush and they get other things like that. Meaning that a lot of units are actually really hard to see. Like thieves are a great example. It's hard to see them. You, it's not just the fact that you can't see their nationality. You cannot physically see them until you get a specific level of visibility and a certain visibility level there's two there's lots of different visibility there's um there is visibility within cities and there's visibility on the map and then there's visibility uh, in the ocean there's visibility there's loads of different visibilities loads of different uh, hiding 
It can be very interesting, and I really like this mod within this mod, of course. Uh, peace among NPCs. This just means that barbarians will not attack the animals, and the animals won't attack barbarians, and the animals won't attack the barbarians, and so on and so forth. Animals, stay out. I would advise playing with this turned off. Well, have the animals stay out off, yeah. If you have it on, animals will never come into your borders. Unless they're... Um, a nice little rabbit or feral, whatever it's called. This does allow for the spawning of animals within your borders throughout the whole entire game, which you need. <laughs> animals are, are uh, wild animals, subduing them is insanely important. I can't stress how important subduing animals is. Throughout the game, even towards the late game, it is so, so important. Reckless animals just means that uh, animals will attack regardless of the uh, odds. As long as they're an aggressive animal. Some, a lot of animals are not aggressive. Neanderthals is, Neanderthals will spawn during the prehistoric era. So there's Neanderthals, pretty much. Cities start with one tile. This, I really like this. The only problem with this, so cities will start with one tile. They will not start with the eight tiles. This, I like. The barbarians, however, just cannot use this. They will never get beyond that one tile, which means they become a non-factor. If it wasn't for the fact that barbarians became a non-factor, or the barbarian cities, barbarians are always a factor. Uh, if they became a non fact if it wasn't for the fact that barbarian cities became a non-factor with the cities start with one tile, I would love it and I, I do enjoy it. Realistic siege. Um, they say benefits uh, cannot be entirely removed, no matter what. There is always a specific amount of siege level that the city will stay at. It will go to a certain minimum and that will be it. I don't think it will go to 60% or higher because it's 60%. you need to get the city defence to a certain length, to a certain distance before you can attack it and uh, that starts at 60%. So the city's defence can't be, can't ever go lower than I think it's 20% and it can't ever go to 60% it can't ever not go lower than 60%. Uh, vanilla, yeah. If you like playing with the Beyond the Sword combat engine, play with the vanilla one. Um, combat, CTC combat mod without warning allows ambushes and assassination attacks when taking stealth into consideration. When for losing just means the, the lower you are in the food chain or the lower your score, the more tech you get. Sounds simple, simple enough. Beeline stings. So the more... If you go to the next era without researching text below, the research... The text below will become higher in cost. It does, it's not an insane amount, but it can get pretty, pretty bad the further on you go. Say you've got some text that you've not... I think you can research some text. You don't need to research all the text in prehistoric. Say you go to the last era and you've still got one tech that you would like in the prehistoric era. That would be... I don't know why you would do that. But that is insanely expensive at that point in time. So, yeah. It depends on what you want to do. Like, they become a little bit more exper expensive. But usually by the time you get to the next era, you're making so much extra tech that you don't care about the extra expense. And no tech handicap for humans. I love playing with this on. I can see why people would play with it off so for, when for losing and no and tech diffusion will be used for a human player if you turn this on however only the ai will benefit from it and the human player will not this means that you will have to try everything in your power to catch up with the ai and the ai can catch up with each other pretty handedly uh, downsizing and profit, profitable. Get gold from disbanding units, pretty much. Uh, if you turn this on, 
you can get gold from uh, disbanding units. If you turn it off, you can't. The reason why this is put in is because there is a cheese tactic that you could do in with your splitting units in your size matters mod. I found out the cheese tactic and I got this put into the game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm happy I did it. I it need it needed to be checked. Anyway, that's uh, the options in this game. Um I will tell you the options that I'm going to play with for this tutorial type game. I will be playing with no vassal states because screw vassal states. I will be playing with no revolutions, no inquisitors, no barbarian says. I will be playing with usable mountains, surrender destroy, advanced diplomacy, barbarian generals, great commanders, advanced economy, realistic culture spread, realistic corporations, religion decay, united nations, advanced espionage, advanced nukes, Divine Prophets, because I want to showcase that in this tutorial. No City Limits from Civics. Uh, infinite Experience. Developing Leaders, I will put that on because that's a really interesting... Uh, I really like Developing Leaders. Uh, CTC Mod Fighter Flight. Assigned Specialist Experience. Amnesty for Units, using Rite of Passage. CTC Combat Mod Hide and Seek, Reckless Animals, Neanderthal Cities, Realistic Siege, Combat uh, CTC Combat Mod Without Warning, Win for Losing, Beeline Stings, No Tech Handicap for Humans, and Downsizing is Profitable. That is the options I will be playing. I will I always play as a random leader, but if you really, really are struggling, I would suggest playing as people like uh, my preferred, preferred, preferred players are Mansa. Mansa is insane in this game. Um, yeah, if you are struggling, play with Mansa. Mansa's Mansa's easy, Ozzy. Uh, he starts with so many benefits. Mansa Musa. Um, I don't forget what he starts with. Financial, scientific, and excessive. Excessive helps with this financial and scientific. So yeah. Lots and lots and lots of science when you're Mansa. Anyway, everyone, I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Have fun. And hope to see you all next time around. Bye-bye.